Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Today, we're going to cut up this half a pig. And for the sake of television, I guess, I had this pig processed and I broke it into primal cuts, which I'll explain, put it in the freezer, and so now we're going to work it up today. So this is how the pig would be if he was walking, if you'll excuse me. This is his front leg. His head would be here. And so his top shoulder, his loin, and his ham. <clears throat> when you break it into primals, when you're going to cut it up yourself, you want to get the loin as long as you can make it because that's where all your pork chops are and that's where your bacon's at. So this section, the midsection of the pig, gets cut this way. This portion of the pork that I have my hand on is the pork shoulder. It's the pork butt and the picnic. And this is one of the a piece that home, home people struggle with because this bone, it just very, it looks like it's a terrible thing to take out. And I'll show you, it's just like filleting a fish. You just slide your knife under it and pop it out. These bones are great smoked. They're good in spaghetti sauce and um, Better to use them that way than to try to pick all the meat off and use it. Certainly pick off what you want because why leave sausage on your smoked neck bones? But anyways, that's what that is. And in order to make the cut here, you usually want three rib bones, or in this case, two and a half. But about three rib bones is a good thing. So you feel with your finger, one, two, that's the third one, and you make a straight cut. That separates the shoulder section from the loin section. On this end, when you separate the ham, from the loin section, you find the pelvis bone, which is called the H bone, uh, A-I-T-C-H bone, and you go about a finger over from the H bone and you leave a couple, two or three fingers of tail bone. Same deal, you make a straight cut. That separates the ham from the loin section. Um, depending on how you're gonna use your ham, is, the prep for it is pretty much all the same. You take the tail bone out, and we don't save our lard, unfortunately, so I'm not, you will see me not keeping it today. And then you just clean this up. There's a little bit of fat here from the pig when he was, when he was butchered. And you just don't be afraid. You can't hurt anything. You're basically just going to make little, little pieces out of big pieces. The, your pig, you spend a lot of time putting fat on him. This is his back leg. So just, you just want to shave off a little bit of that fat. Um, we have plenty of smoked ham in the freezer, so we're going to be cutting this for fresh ham roast. We like to leave some fat on, that's where your meat gets its flavor from. And if people were making soap or rendering the lard, that's, your, that's what that is. <clears throat> now, this is the pig's back leg, and that's what your hock is. So you can have fresh hocks, smoked hocks, or in our case, we're going to put this into sausage. So until I turn the saw on, that's it for now. But I will say, when I get ready to cut this, <clears throat> the way the bone structure runs in this ham, or in a ham, it starts here and it goes up to here. This is where the pig stifle is. And then that bone turns and comes up into the H bone. The H bone is your pelvis, so it's your hip joint, so it's a ball and socket up here. That uh, we're, We'll be cutting the... The, the roast out of this thing parallel with this H bone. So when I take it to the saw, I'll basically be making cuts like this. And I'll take a butt end, it's called, a shank end, and I'll take two sections out of the center or center cut. Then in here, we're going to separate the loin from the bacon. And the way it works, this is the pig's ribs. This is the back section towards his hip. All of this, or the majority of it, will be bacon. And these ribs are where spare ribs come from. 
So if you do a lousy job, if you take your spare ribs out too thick, then you make your bacon thinner. If you stay real close to the rib bone, then you have thicker bacon but less meat on your ribs. So it's kind of a personal preference, however you like to do that. So I will, <clears throat> you don't need to do it, but it's easy, especially when you're first starting, just make an imaginary line. There's no bone up here. So you cut right next to the filet and you work your way toward the point of the rib. So that's kind of an imaginary line. You're just gonna separate those two pieces. So I'm just gonna put this in here. The only bone I'm cutting are the rib bones. And I missed my dotted line perfectly. And you just saw, until you actually hear it, you'll hear the bones quit. Now I'm just, there's nothing left between me and the table but meat. And then you just complete the cut. Now some people leave this diaphragm muscle on their ribs. I prefer to take it off. Again, we, we like sausage here, so that's the one thing you want to remember. When you're cutting your pig, cut the stuff your family eats. I mean, if you like more meat that you fry, then make more frying meat. And if your family enjoys roast more, then make roast. Um, as far as smoked meat goes, we smoke our bacon, and I'll be rolling up the pork butt, and we make a kind of a poor man's Canadian bacon out of it. But to remove the ribs, again, it's a flat bone. You just cut right along the ribs, like you're filleting a fish down to here. And that's another reason why I move this. Here's where the little feather bones are that are in your pork ribs. And if you carefully cut this meat away, like I said, it goes in sausage, but you can see where the spare rib lays in here. So this is what I'll be removing. And again, you know, you want to try to stay close to the bone. And the smoother you are, the better it looks. But you're making food. You can make art another day. So if you cut in a little bit or you make marks, it doesn't matter. It's not going to hurt a thing. You have not hurt anything at all. Just continue to slowly work the bone out, pulling up as you go and slicing through. And you do this once a year. So it's not about how fast you can do it or how good you can do it. It's just about doing it. But that is a full rack of ribs. So here is the bacon. However, the visceral line, you know, that's not very nice. It's real fat in this section. And so we just take the bacon out of this. We square this up. It hangs easier in the smokehouse. And all these pieces that are left over then become sausage. So you just, it doesn't matter if you'd make it all smoked, if you prefer that. It all depends on the pigs that you raise. But if you look at that, once it's smoked, that's what your bacon's going to look like. So there's a lot of lean to fat here. That's what you want in your pig. If you overfeed them, you're not going to make bigger pork chops. You're going to make fatter bacon and more cover that I threw away. So you want, if you render the lard, then I suggest, sure, fatten them a little bit more. Or if you've got to wait for cool weather to butcher, it certainly doesn't hurt. But we found it's better to put the pigs on a more high protein ration toward the end, like oats. And that keeps their weight the same, doesn't make them get super fat. But that right there is fresh side pork or the beginning of bacon. And just clean it up as much as whatever you like. If you're not a big fan of bacon, then you can just take the very center part for bacon and this all becomes sausage. It's certainly a personal preference. Now, <clears throat> what I'm gonna do next is just because I can. You do not have to do it. But on the outside of the loin, the pig is covered with lard, just like it, the bacon was. And depending on the muscle mass of your pig is gonna depend on how much lean you have and how much fat you have, it depends on the finish. But what I'm saying is, I usually peel some of this fat off before I run it across the saw. 
you wouldn't have to do it. You could slice the whole thing and then trim each individual piece if that's easier. <clears throat> but just like us, right in by our kidneys, we have a fair amount of love handles. That's what this section is on the pig. So there's like a divot in there. And if you hit the meat, you went just a little too deep, but you haven't hurt anything. We like to say somewhere eighth of inch, quarter inch, cover on the pork chops, and this just kind of roughs them in. <clears throat> and again, this would be the lard you'd save if you were saving lard. <clears throat> and all I'm doing is just continuing to work my way around the loin, pulling the excess fat off. I'm pretty well satisfied with that. And there's one more I'm going to say trick, if you will. There's a cap right here. That if this was a beef, this would be your rib section of the beef, where rib steaks and rib eyes come from. Well, this cap is the same on every animal, beef, deer, whatever. Um, right here is a little bit of um, connective tissue. I can't think what it's called, cartilage, from the shoulder blade. Anyways, this cap, you can see it runs right here. See, God was kind of cool. He put these seams in here for people. So all you have to do is just cut in the seam, and it comes right apart. And if you, you can leave it on the pork chop if you want to, but it makes a nicer pork chop if you take it off. It makes, in essence, it makes more center cuts. And you're going to have, like the first one and the last one, um, don't always come out as perfect pork chops. So taking this off, you, you wind it up in the sausage. It's a nice meaty piece. And it just makes your pork chops look nicer when they come off. Again, doesn't, you don't have to do it. It's just one of them things that comes with practice. <clears throat> don't be afraid of this thing. It, it looks terrible. Usually this is where the animal was um, stuck when he was let out. So there's oftentimes bruising here. There's, but don't worry about it. Just throw that part away the clots and that, it's not gonna hurt anything, <clears throat> but it just makes, uh, and the bone is kind of, makes you step back and think you can't do it. But you can see it, the whole thing is exposed. So what I'll tell you to do is take your knife and stick it in about a half inch deep and just trace around it, like you'd trace around a drawing for anything. And you trace around the neck bone on the end toward the head. Just work your way around it. When you get to the feather bone, which is the pig's spine, where, the, where it was cut in two, stick your knife under and just remember this bone's very flat. There's no big pieces. It's not like a marrow bone. And continue to, continue to follow the bone structure around. This is a little bit, just slightly difficult because he's still a little frozen. But if this was fresh, it's very flexible and it pops around real easy. And then you already traced it, so you just pull and cut very carefully and separate this flat bone from the rest of the shoulder. And that is all there is to it. That is your fresh neck bones or smoked neck bones, either or. And I strongly recommend you get used to eating them because they are a pain in the neck to try to get clean. Then that just leaves you with uh, this loose skin. So all you're going to do is just pick up the flap, cut off all these pieces that hang down, and usually by the head end here, um, if you do it at home, you're going to have your jowl probably hanging here and so forth. But just square that up a little bit, and this is actually pretty good, so this doesn't require much. And again, that's sausage. Same deal. I'm just taking off the extra fat from the shoulder. This is up over the top of his back where you would expect him to be fat. And <clears throat> we're going to turn this part of the pig, which again, this is the butt end. This is the picnic end. We're going to take our butt end. I'm going to debone it and we'll be rolling it and smoking it for, we like to slice this real thin and we call it hillbilly bacon. It's uh, like poor man's Canadian bacon. So rather than using, Canadian bacon generally comes from the loin of a pig. And 
it was a way for merchants to utilize loins out of old sows and stuff. They could turn it into Canadian bacon and get a higher price for it. Well, if you're raising a pig or two a year, you want the pork chops. But if you want a little more bacon, using the shoulder is a nice way to make that happen. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the saw. I'm going to make a few cuts because I'm going to separate the picnic from the butt. And we'll be putting the picnic into uh, fresh roast. And this is going to go into the hibbly bacon. I'll slice the pork chops up. I'll be cutting the ham. And I'll try to talk my way through each, each one as we go. Okay. make this size a roast, don't worry about anything other than your family size. You know, you know how many people you're feeding, so a family of three, of four will probably want a three to four pound roast. Um, and, but that's all relative depending on do you like leftovers or not. So I'm going to put this back together. This is our ham. No matter, again, it doesn't matter if it's fresh or smoked. You're going to cut it pretty much the same way, de depending on what you're after. There's nothing wrong with just cutting the ham in half. It gives you plenty of meat for a good-sized family or Easter dinner, whatever. But in our case, with the number of people we're feeding, I took a small roast off the butt end. In this case, it is near the pig's butt, <laughs> but it just got that label. And then these are center cut. Now, if they were center sliced ham, these would be cut in half again as you slice it on the saw at half inch thick. But this is the size roast we need, which is probably a four pounder, every bit of a four pounder. And we'll have when the kids are coming for dinner. <clears throat> and lastly, that leaves you the shank end. Shank end of the ham has this big joint in it, big ham bone joint. Still the meat's plenty delicious and cooked in a roast, it falls off the bone, it's great. And for us, at this time, this is how we're gonna um, cut it for our freezer. This is the hock that was on the ham. And you can see the shank meat in here. That doesn't hurt anything. That breaks right up. And then the sausage, you never know it's there. It makes good sausage. We do smoke them occasionally for beans. But at this time, we have plenty of smoked meat in the freezer and don't need it. The pork spare ribs. The reason I, I cut it in half, because then my wife just can cut between the bones with a knife at, when she's ready to serve it. So the real reason for making those cuts is so that this will fold up when she has to wrap it. It makes it a nice package for to go in the freezer. My wife Connie has been my partner um, for over 35 years and is unfortunately, I guess, or fortunately, does every single thing I do. So today she's gonna wrap meat for us. <clears throat> I'm going to demonstrate how this can be cut because this is probably an undervalued meat. Um, for us, you know, we're pretty, we like to have it cut into um, hillbilly bacon. However, this is where pork steaks come from in the grocery store. Your picnic can be sliced too. The old days, and I, I'm, let me make a couple cuts here and I'll explain a little bit further. Okay, this is your front leg or the other hock. So you realize when you see them in the grocery store and they're smoked, they're just cut in intervals like that. So you throw away the knuckle bone and those three pieces would be hocks would be smoked and you usually see them in little round rings. But this is the picnic. A lot of people would just cut this in half this way. You got two nice roasts with very little bone. This portion would be the chuck and a beef. And you can see here's the shoulder blade. 
And here also is that blade, but from a different direction. So if I was to slice this into pork steaks, I would slice it in this direction. That bone gets small down to you run out of the bone, and this section would just be for sausage. When I first started cutting meat, a lot of the people wanted this cut like a pork chop. So you would slice pork chop thickness all the way up until you ran out of bone. Either way works. It doesn't matter for the grain and the way it's cooked. So what it comes down to is, is that a portion for you or is that a portion for you? It makes no difference. In our case, like I said, we generally take the bone out of that. I don't know. I, I'm actually, because it's frozen, I'm kind of leaning toward slicing it. <clears throat> and with a wife who can cook like crazy, it doesn't matter what you do. <laughs> So I'm going to slice it, uh, I think this way, so it looks more traditional like pork that people buy. The other thing is, pork is generally cut for frying meat at a half inch. Um, we like it to be cut about 5 eighths, which is a little bit thicker. So you have to increase your cooking time a little bit, but it makes the chop more moist because it has to cook a little slower and a little longer. And that's strictly personal preference. Some people, you can cut it real thin. and. Uh, it's a lot harder. You do get a few more of them, but you just eat more of them. <clears throat> Okay, so I sliced it into pork steaks, and you can see as the bone changes shape exactly what I'm talking about. But that's still a very good cut of meat. Just enough fat to fry nice. And I'm going to show you something also not to be alarmed with. This. This is called blood spots. And it happens sometimes in a pig. You'll see it occasionally in the shoulder, but more often in the ham. It doesn't hurt a thing. It's not really blood. The pig evidently got a little bit stressed right before it got slaughtered. And so, as all the adrenaline rushes to the farthest vessels in your body, when it's bled out, it doesn't bleed as good. It doesn't hurt anything. You can eat it. Most people trim it out, and we're going to do that today. <clears throat> so I'm actually kind of glad we sliced it, because that looks really ugly when it's in bacon. It's not going to hurt you, but it just looks terrible. And when you're telling people it's home cured, that comes with a certain amount of stigma as it is. And you're gonna slice this entire loin for pork chops because that's how we like to eat it. And again, what I said was you could do everything with a, with a hand saw, and all you would have to do is take your knife and make half inch slices or one inch slices, depending on how, like, how thick you like them. But you would just slice through with your knife till you hit the bone. Take the hand saw and saw through the bone. to show you what that is the number one pork chop it's of good size it's of good color it has plenty of marbling which gives it the flavor and it's of that's a man-sized pork chop but that lets you know that you did everything right when you were feeding your pig the genetics were good that's a loin and center cut pork chop and it just doesn't get much better than that this program is available for purchase to order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.